What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to model a semi-prefabricated uh, floor construction in Revit. Uh, now if you don't know what this is, it's a type of a floor construction that, well, is semi-prefabricated. It constructs, it is constructed out of these uh, uh, beams, ceiling beams or floor beams, uh, I don't know how you would uh, refer to them. And then in between those you uh, put in some, uh, and just some uh, brick elements. They look like, I mean, they're made of the same kind of brick material and they're there just to kind of save on concrete. And then you pour the concrete over that and it's designed to save the amount of concrete being used and the amount of steel being used for uh, floor construction. Uh, now, uh, this is very popular in Eastern Europe. If you're from some different uh, part of the world, you've probably never seen this, but I think it's a good exercise just to see uh, how something like this is modeled in Revit. And now before we get started with that, one thing that we'd like to uh, ask you is to make sure you like this video and also make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon. Not only does it help you not miss any of my future videos, but more importantly, it makes the alpaca happy and that's why we're all here. Okay, so without any further ado, let's jump into Revit. And as you can see, here I am at my home screen in Revit. Now I'm going to be starting this project and let's just go here to uh, a new model and for the template file I'm just going to be choosing my architecture design template, the metric uh, version and if you want to check out my templates they're available on my website balkanarctic.com. It's going to be the first link uh, just below this video and also I'm going to leave a link up in the cards above. So make sure to check it out if you're interested both in templates but also in my courses. Okay, so as soon as Revit opens up uh, here, let's give it a few seconds, uh, we're just going to get started working on this. So this is kind of our uh, greeting page, our start view, and then let's go into level one and this is where we're going to be constructing this floor construction. Uh, now as I said, because it has these elements, these kind of brick elements, uh, and also it has these uh, ceiling beams or floor beams, uh, we have to find those families. Uh, now for that particular uh, search for these items, I'm going to be using the BIM uh, or BIM project plugin uh, to download these families. Now uh, this is a free plugin, it's it's really po powerful, it allows you to uh, access some uh, really high quality families from the manufacturer and then also there are uh, additional things that you can set up and kind of tweak those families and make them perfect for your project. Uh, so this is what I'm going to be using. It's a completely free template uh, or uh, it's a completely free plugin as I said. So uh, if you're interested I'm going to leave a link to that as well uh, just in the description and then also up in the cards above. Okay so let's go here to the BIM project cloud and it's just going to open that up. This is what that looks like. So this is the kind of the, the plugin window, perhaps expand it a little bit, there we go. Uh, and first, uh, for getting these uh, construction uh, beams, uh, I'm going to go here to construction and here we have ceiling beams. So if I open that up, as you can see, we're going to get a list of many different ceiling beams and we have the ability to uh, kind of request properties or try to kind of filter this down using some of the properties that we're interested so we can define that here. Uh, in this case I already know what they want to use so I'm just going to go uh, for example with this one. I'm just going to select that and then go to add to project. Uh, now it's going to give us kind of the, the, the naming uh, for the family name and the type name. You can of course change this if you want. I'm just going to be leaving this as is. Click continue. Uh, let's wait for as you can see here it's running and now it's loading this into the project. It's doing the its little thing and now we're going to get that family inside of our project. And here we go. So as you can see, uh, I'm straight here into place beams. So it already started the beam tool. Uh, and then here we can see that we have exactly that family. Uh, now I'm just going to place one of these beams, perhaps make it 500 centimeters long. And here we go, hit the escape key a couple of times. Now this is what it looks like just because we're in the course uh, view mode. I, I can obviously switch that to the fine level of detail and now as you can see it's, well, uh, it's detailed. Uh, one more thing, you might not be able to see this when you do this yourself. Uh, and in that case, just go here to the properties 
uh, make sure that nothing is selected in the view go to the properties go to your view range and then just make sure that the bottom and the view depth are set to unlimited and uh, with those two set to unlimited you should be able to see this uh, now also i want to double check the dimensions and the position of this in an elevation view so i'm just going to go here to the south elevation and just to see what this looks like and this kind of confirms a worry that i had uh, that this is going to be below our level one so you can actually you know, fix this quite easily uh, simply by selecting this beam and this being a beam it has here in the properties it has the beam properties and more importantly it has the geometric position here we can just go to the offset value for the z axis uh, or z justification and just change it from top to bottom which is just going to make it like this so it's up where it should be uh, one more thing that we really need to get from this uh, is the height of this part here. So this is like a little concrete part and this is going to act as a shelf on which we place those uh, those brick elements. Uh, so for that what you want to do is just go here to the measure tool and measure from bottom to top and as you can see that's five centimeters. It's going to display that here as well. So five centimeters is just something I should keep in mind when it comes to that height. Okay, so let's go back into level one and now let's load in some of those ceiling inserts. I'm just going to bring up the uh, BIM uh, project cloud and in this case I'm going to go to create custom BIM object. This allows us to create our customized family and in this case let's say that we want to customize that uh, ceiling insert. So let's go here to infill uh, blocks. This is the, this is the, what you want to use. And then here for infill blocks, as you can see for this, uh, when we're in the custom BIM object, so we're not choosing a product, we're just building our own custom uh, BIM object. Uh, here we have to specify some of the parameters. Uh, now, luckily here we have a little uh, uh, diagram just showing us which parameter is which. So for the length, I want the entire length of this to be 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters. Uh, the width, uh, so the width, uh, I can go with something like, I don't know, like 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters. Uh, and for the height, for the height, let's go with uh, 160 millimeters or 16 centimeters. This is usually kind of the, the default dimensions. And finally, we have the overlap height. So that's that height here, that the little height of that shelf that we've measured previously. So we did measure that at 50, so I'm just going to enter 50 here. Obviously, you can use the sliders, I just prefer entering the number. And then the overlap width, uh, which is just kind of this little overlap here, I'm going to set that at uh, 25. There we go. So we have that overlap as well. Uh, here we have some additional parameters which you can set up. I'm just going to leave them uh, as is, or you can actually uncheck them. So if you don't want to include them, you can just uncheck them. So if you don't care about these, just uncheck them. And now you can add this to your project. So I'm just going to click there to add to project. Uh, again, we get the option to name this. I'm just going to leave the naming convention as is. Uh, it's running its little process. Uh, here we go. And it's kind of inserting all of that data into our project. And this is what we're left with. So here we have that infill block. I'm just going to come in here and place it like that. And then uh, just to see where this whole thing is, I'm going to go to the south elevation. There we go. So we can just select this, let's see, okay, select the block itself, uh, go to the move tool, and then I'm just going to move it from here to here. Perfect, so now it's kind of, as you can see, we have that little shelf, and this is kind of standing on that shelf, and everything looks perfect. <laughs> so uh, the next step is just to uh, repeat this, while well, we have to have a lot of these blocks. So what I'm going to do is simply select that block, go here to the array tool, AR is the shortcut, Make sure it's a linear array, uh, make sure that the number is uh, set to something a bit higher. I think 25 should do if my math is correct. Uh, we can group and associate, we don't have to, so I'm just going to uncheck that. Uh, and then move to, I'm going to go with move to second. So I can only just go from here to here and then Revit is going to generate the rest. My math was correct, I am a math genius. Just kidding. <laughs> so anyways, 
Uh, I'm just going to select this beam uh, here and I just want to move it to the other side as well. So I'm going to be using the mirror tool. So just go here to mirror, pick access, and just find one of the midpoints of this, uh, one of these uh, infill blocks. And there we go. So now it mirrored it perfectly. And now what we want to do is just make a broad selection like this of everything. Hold the shift key to remove this one. There we go from selection and now we want to copy this to make our entire floor. So what are we going to do here is simply go to the copy tool, uh, make sure to check multiple and, and then you want to come in here to the center one to the midpoint and then you go to here, then you go to here and you repeat that like a million times. I'm just kidding but you do have to repeat it uh, as many times as it's necessary. Oops I made a ma mistake there. Okay, but you get the point. So you just repeat this as many times as that's necessary. And then finally, to kind of complete this whole thing, we just have to add concrete. So to add concrete, uh, you can do it. Uh, there are many different approaches. I'm just going to be modeling a simple in place family. So you would go here to architecture, go to component, drop down the kind of uh, little option here to model in place. Uh, and then this is going to be a floor. So let's search for floors. Click OK. Uh, floors one, that's OK. And then what you want to do next is go to set work plane and then you want to set the work plane by using pick a plane option. Click OK and then set it to, for example, this block here. And then you just go to extrusion, use pick lines and pick this line, this line, this one, this one, and then just, just follow that. There we go. Perhaps this one as well. Okay. And we also want to have one above that. So for this one, it should be uh, at least by kind of st uh, usual standards. This is at, at four centimeters above the kind of top of this block for like kind of the standardized construction. Obviously, it can change depending on the project and the dimensions and so on. So now we go to trim and extend. Uh, we trim and extend it here, here, here just like that. And then what you can do is just select like a few of these items, uh, go to copy, check multiple, and then you just go like this and you copy this a million times again. So it's, it's a little bit easier than having to kind of work with each one. And then this one should probably snap to that. If it doesn't snap, you can just use the align tool and then align it like that. And then finally, it's just a question of doing a one more trim and extend for this. And there we go. Hit finish. And now extend it to the other side. And this is perfect. So there we go. So now we have the concrete, we have the construction inside. Obviously, I can set the material here. I'm just going to leave that for for another time, but there we go. And we can kind of peel back the construction just to, or the, the concrete just to show kind of the construction on the inside. So there we go. That's how you can create uh, something that looks like uh, this, uh, a pre or a semi prefabricated floor in a rabbit. I think this was a good exercise. And I think, uh, well, if, if this is something that you're doing on a daily basis, perhaps you have to make some calculations for the infill blocks or for the, uh, for these, uh, Kind of the ceiling beams or floor beams, well, then this would probably be a really good approach. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. And also, I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.